Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service according to actual sales records. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes. And that great lover of the screen who softly whispers in the ladies' ears. Costello, oh, Costello, 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 please, 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 what's the idea of all this noise? Uh, what do you think you're doing? Abbott, this is a great moment in history. What do you mean? You are listening to the new Bing Crosby. The new Bing Crosby? The new Bing Crosby. You dummy, do you realize that Crosby is famous all over the world as the groaner? I'm going to be famous all over the world, too. As the groaner? No, as the squealer. Oh. <laughs> when the balloon. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah, yes, uh, Costello, the... please. Uh, 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 all right, look, 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 look. Will you cut that out? You'll never be able to sing like Crosby. His voice is unique. The doctors found a wart on his vocal cord. So what? What do I care about a wart on his vocal cord? Look in my mouth, Abbott. Say, what's that blue jade plaster doing in your throat? I got a bunion on my windpipe. <laughs> now, cut out that silly talk. You can't go around imitating big Crosby. Uh, people will say you're a mimic. A mimic? Yeah. No, they won't. I got as much blood as anybody. No, 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 no. Never mind that, Costello. You still haven't told me why you came in here singing like Bing Crosby. Because I want to do a high close, high, high close, high class, high yes. class, not high close. That's wrong. Actually, well, it's got to be. I want to do a high class. That's a bum reading. So what about it? All right. I want to do a. Can I help it? All right. Well, <laughs> say what you want to say. Because I want to do a high class program like his. Yeah. No jokes. No comedy. Nothing but music and beautiful songs. Uh, don't, don't be silly, Costello. We can't get along without laughs. We've been doing all right up till now. Now, <laughs> Costello, don't talk like an idiot. You can't compete with Bing Crosby. Look at his background. Look at his background? Yes, look at it. Get a load of mine. I've got the biggest background in Hollywood. On my background, I've got 35 orange trees and a large smudge pot overlooking my barbecue pit. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, look, I'm talking about Crosby's uh, musical training. Do you realize he studied opera? Why, he spent 15 years on Faust. Crosby spent 15 years on Faust? Certainly. Then you've been lying to me, Abbott. What do you mean I've been lying to you? For 15 years, you've been telling me who is on Faust and what is on second. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Every time no, I no. say what no. is on second, you would say what is on Faust. Not on Faust, no, you dummy. I don't mean he was on Faust. I mean, he sings Faust. He does not. He doesn't sing Faust? No, he sings very slow, like my Uncle Artie Stebbins. No. Uh, yeah, all right, I'll cut that out. Look, Costello, Faust is an opera. An I'm asking you, please. Faust is an opera. Uh, do you know any operas? Yes, Abbott, I know two operas. Yeah, you know two operas? Yes, Carmen and Miranda. No, no. <laughs> Not Carmen Miranda. You mean the opera Carmen. Uh, did you ever hear the third movement from Carmen? No, but I saw the fourth movement from Miranda. <laughs> la, da, 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 Costello. Cut it, Rick. Please, what are please. you trying to do, get in, too? Please, now, don't cut be it. silly. You don't know the first thing about music. You well, don't I... even know how many kinds of notes there are. Oh, I don't. No. Yes, I do. All right. Name the different notes. Well, there's wall notes, P notes, coconut notes, and passion notes. <laughs> Will you cut that out? I'm talking about musical notes. For instance, how many notes do you find in a bar? How many, no how many notes do I find in a bar? That's right. My mother never lets me go into those places. <laughs> Look, Costello. A bar is, is a measure of music, and every bar gives you a full measure. They what? Every bar gives you a full measure. Not in Hollywood, they don't. <laughs> this is the home of short beer. Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> Never mind that, Costello. In order to be a singer, you must be able to read notes. Uh, Freddie Rich, please, uh, hand me a sheet of music. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Now, Costello, tell me, uh, what do you see on that piece of paper there? I see a bunch of flies sitting on a fence. Uh, no. <laughs> and some of them have tails. No, no. <laughs> Look like the tails are broken off. No, 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 no. Those, are, those aren't flies. Those are notes. Uh, Freddie Rich wrote this music. Did he write it in bars? Uh, uh, certainly. Freddie, Freddie wrote this song in 32 bars. In 32 bars? That's right. 
No wonder his music is so staggering. No, no. <laughs> now, Costello, Costello, please. He should know better than write music in bars. What do you mean? Why don't he do his cutting up at home like other musicians? Now, just a minute, Costello. Freddie Rich is a great songwriter. I, I was with Freddie last night when he wrote a song in four flats. In four flats? Certainly. You guys sure get around, don't you? <laughs> no, 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 you idiot. Four flats is the key the song was written in. Freddie used the key of four flats. Freddie Rich has the key of four flats? Uh, that's right. Does his wife know about this? Yeah, look, <laughs> look, Costello, when I say Freddie wrote a song in four flats, I, I don't mean the kind of flats you live in. I mean the kind of flats you play in, and the number of flats uh, gives you the key. And Freddie's key is four flats or a flat. Oh, oh, Now you got it. Oh, that's a boy. You mean the flats that Freddie plays it in ain't the kind of flats he lives in. No. Because the key of the flats he plays in is four flats, and the flat he lives in has nothing to do with the key of the other four flats. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Oh, what's this? Later on in the program, we'll have our usual salute to the Yank of the Week. But tonight and right now, here's an extra salute to another courageous Yank. His name is Gilbert Bundy, a brilliant artist who has been serving as war correspondent in the Pacific. Take a look at the back cover of Life magazine coming out tomorrow, and you'll see his photograph and many of the -the on-the-spot sketches he did with the Navy and Marines. You'll also see some interesting things he has to say about camel cigarettes. Quote, There are moments when having a cigarette seems like the most important thing in the world. And Camel is the cigarette that rates. Maybe it's the flavor. Maybe it's because it's easy on my throat. But whatever it is, Camel's got it. And you can quote me. Unquote. Well, folks, your T-Zone, T for throat and T for taste, will tell you that, too. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, try them on your T-Zone today. From the film capital's newest picture, Hollywood Canteen, Freddie Rich plays Don't Fence Me Yet. Costello, will you cut that out? I'm not going to let you sing on our program. Oh, Abbott, you've got to. I'm sorry. You have to. I've always wanted to sing. No. Even as a little kid, I used to sing in a quartet in a fish market. A fish market quartet? Yeah, there was four of us. First tuna, second tuna, barracuda, and bass. (laughs) Are you trying to tell me the fish market paid you to sing? No, we just sang for the halibut. I was... (laughs) Well... Well, you can't sing on this program. This isn't a fish market. Oh, no? 
If this ain't a fish market, what are those four pickerel players doing in a band? Ah, pickerel players. That isn't pickerel. That word is piccolo. Oh, no, it ain't. Piccolo is what I had for lunch. You had piccolo for lunch? Yep. Hamburger with mustard piccolo. No, 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 no. No, that's uh, piccalilli. Piccalilli is a relish. That's what we got growing in our garden. You've got relish growing in your garden? Yeah, horse relish. No, that's not relish. That's radish. Radish. Radish is what my girl's got. Your girl's got radish? Yeah, green eyes and radish hair. Look, please. <laughs> Talk sense, Costello. This has nothing to do with your silly idea of singing on the program. Oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? I tell you, Abbott, I gotta sing. What do you mean you've gotta Everybody sing? Everybody wants me to make good. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I've always been musically inclined. On the day I was born, my mother looked at me and said, Little Louie is gonna be a great musician. How could she tell? I was born with drums in my ears. I love her. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, Costello. If you insist on singing, I might let you sing one number. But you can't sing Bing Crosby's theme song. You've got to get a song of your own. Okay, Abbott. I got a beautiful number about a girl on a bicycle. How does it go? She pushes it with her feet. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't mean that. <laughs> Look, I've had enough of this nonsense. <laughs> Look, Costello, if you want to sing on this program, you'll have to get a songwriter to write you a number. Now, here, come on with me, Costello. Where are we going? We're going over to, to, to Ned Blank's music company in Tin Pan Alley. <laughs> Well, here we are, Costello. This is the Ned Blank Music Company. Let's go in. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes, Costello. This is Tin Pan Alley, where all beautiful songs like that are written. Gee, Abbott, I wish I'd have brought along a needle and a thread. A needle and a thread? What for? To give to that poor girl that's always dancing with a hole in her stocking. <laughs> oh, be quiet. Look, we've got to find the head songwriter. Uh, pardon me, sir. Are you the uh, manager? No, I'm the janitor. Just call me. Ireland must be heaven because my mother came from there, Buchowski. Uh, speak to the secretary over there. Okay. Pardon me, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... Just call me. I, of course, replied. Smoke gets in your eyes. Honeysuckle rose. And who are you, young man? Well, you can just call me. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Lula's back in town. Come down and get you in a taxi, honey. Costello. Uh... <laughs> young lady, we came here to have a theme song written. Could you oh. help us? Oh. Well, here comes our head songwriter now. Sugar and the songs I'm handy. Woo, woo, woo. don't tell me you're a songwriter. Mm, it could be. Uh, you know I'm the greatest musician in Tin Pan Alley, and I can play any instrument. You play any instrument? Uh -huh, yes. Have you a fife? Yes, and a couple of keys. Uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, a fife is a long, skinny thing. Uh -huh, yeah, that's my theory. No. <laughs> Hey, Abbott, why should we listen to this guy? I can play any instrument, too, you know. My favorite instrument is the flit. The flit? Mm hmm You mean flute. Flit is a spray. That's me. When I play, I spray. How <laughs> <laughs> many plays he sprays? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? yeah? I don't like it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, look, Kitzel. Costello's looking for an original song to sing on the program. An original? Oh, who are you, a fortunate fellow? I just wrote a song about a lady prize fighter. You wrote a song about a lady prize fighter? Yes, sure. Ponciene. Ponciene. Da 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 da. This guy's a phony. No, no. Yes, you are. Before I give you a nickel, I'm going to sing my own song. It's the most beautiful ballad that was ever written. Oh, Pish Pash, don't tell me that you wrote a ballad. Did I write a ballad? What a song I wrote. It's a song of mystery. Uh, what do you call your song? I call it, Our Sweet Mystery Of. Our Sweet Mystery Of? Of what? That's the mystery. Oh, what kind of... Well, Lou, here's a great theme song for you. A lovely Connie Haynes sings one of the season's bestsellers, I'm Making Believe. Good night, turn out the lights and kiss 
can believe it's you. I'm too impatient because I wish television were here right now instead of in the post-war world. But you can't blame me for my impatience. I'd like to be showing you right now a diagrammatic drawing of the human throat, that wonderful, intricate instrument. Then you'd see for yourself why it deserves such care and attention, like the proper choice of a cigarette, for example. Try camels on your tea zone. Tea for throat, tea for taste. See how your throat likes camels' cool mildness and how your taste enjoys the rich, full flavor of Camel's superb blend of costlier tobaccos. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel's. Try them on your throat and your taste. Your T-Zone. All right, Emmett. Get everybody off the stage. Clear the joint out. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just a minute, Costello. Please don't interrupt me, Abbott. What do you mean? Tonight... Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to present my first musical program, starring Lou Costello, better known as the Squealer. I will sing... No, no, not that old anything but that I can't a coward in every audience. (laughs) That man is right, Costello. You're not ready to sing yet. Uh, Wait a minute. What are you drinking out of that bottle? It's medicine for my throat. It's to keep me from getting hoarse. What is it? Horse liniment. (laughs) And now, if Freddie Rich and his orchestra is ready and the ushers will lock the doors, I will sing my opening number, The Flight of the Stumblebum by Ripsky (laughs) Korsanoff. Now, what's the matter, Freddie? Can't you handle it? Well, I just want to know how you want your music played. Do you want a poco, a poco, or P.U. accelerando? Well, we'll just start out poco, and we'll finish up P.U. <laughs> and while I'm on a subject, uh, was your script shaking? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, Costello. The band isn't ready to play for you yet. They don't even know your range. My what? Your range. Every singer has a certain range. Now, take little Connie Haynes. Don't you like her range? Yes. In fact, I like a whole kitchen. <laughs> and now stop interrupting me, Abbott. Come on, Freddy, start the music. No, 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 Costello. I tell you, you can't sing on this program without some uh, preparation. Now, listen, I've taken the liberty of hiring you a vocal instructor. Uh, would you please step in here, Madam Spumoni? young man. That was from Rigoletto. Yeah, that was from Rigor Mortis. Now, <laughs> now, Costello, you can't talk that way to Madame Spumoni. Madame Spumoni? Yes, she's a great opera singer. Opera singer? Yes. She don't even look like an opera singer. Oh, you don't look like a chicken either, but I've heard you lay plenty of eggs. Now, 
<laughs> now, let's not argue, please. Madam I... Spumoni. Now, just a minute. Here, please. Free me, ain't she? Now, look, look, Lou. I oh. brought... I brought Madame Spumoni over here to listen to your voice. Costello, sing a few notes for her. All right, I'll sing my favorite song. I am writing Caroline. Oh, you mean I'm calling Caroline. I mean I'm writing Caroline. The company took my phone out. <laughs> Costello, I don't think you'd better try to sing a song yet. That's right, Mr. Costello. First, I want to find out something. Do you have an ear for music? Yes, ma'am. But I sing better with my mouth. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Listen what closely. What are you doing? Go ahead. And tell me, tell me what note I'm singing. <laughs> now, what is that? That's H. That was G. <laughs> it sounded like H. Uh, <laughs> Costello. Uh, Costello, please. Pay, pay attention to Madame Spumoni, will you? Yes, Mr. Costello. Now, I'd like to hear you sing the scale. Go ahead. Okay. Do, re. Well, go ahead. There's more? <laughs> of course there's more. The next note is B. Now, hit me. I beg your pardon? I said, hit me, hit me. Abbott, this kid is asking for it. No, 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 no. No, no, Costello. Costello, put your foot down. She didn't say to hit her. She said, hit me. Now you're talking. Wait till I get my coat off and I'll smack the boat. Now, you let's go. Oh, my dear boy. We don't want to fight with you. We're trying to help you. I want you to sing me the third note in the scale. Now, sing it alone first, and then we'll try a few bars together. We'll try a few bars together. <laughs> Certainly. You don't I... even appeal to me. Oh, Stella, please. Certainly, I'll, uh, I'll join you in the last four bars. If you do, you'll buy your own dream. Now, look. <laughs> Costello, Madam Spumoni merely wants to hear you sing a few notes. Oh, well, that's different. Well. Get a load of this. No, 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 Yes, I know it. I strained it singing through a screen door. <laughs> no, try it again, Mr. Costello. Now, this time, I want you to give me a nice, round, pear-shaped tone. A what? A pear-shaped tone. Every note must come out of your mouth shaped like a pear. Which end first? <laughs> Costello, please. Madame Spumoni... Madame Spumoni simply means that... You've got to breathe properly to sing. That is correct. Get it to right. To control the tone, you must sing from your diaphragm. Do you know where your diaphragm is? No, I haven't worn one of those since I was a baby. <laughs> no, no. No, Costello. She's talking about the thing you breathe with. Uh, what have you got between your stomach and your chest? My belt. I, no. No. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlemen, if I may call you gentlemen, you're wasting my time. Now, Mr. Costello, I'm going to ask you to sing these two words after me. Ready now? Fresh fish. Fresh fish. Fresh fish. Fresh fish. Kind of high. Fresh fish. That's enough. That's fine. That's wonderful. Now, wait a minute. What's the idea of getting me to holler fresh fish? Well, when I get through with you, if you can't make money one way, you can make it another. (laughs) How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you like that, Dame Abbott? I don't need her either, you know. I don't need anybody to help me sing. Oh, no, but Costello, you, you can't sing without music. I ain't gonna sing without music. My kid brother Sebastian is gonna play for me. Come on up here, Sebastian, and play the piano. Here I am, Louie. Hello, Uncle Bud. Well, how are all the old jokes going tonight? Now, never mind that, Sebastian. Look here. Uh, Costello, your kid brother can't play in this program. He doesn't know how to play the piano. Oh, yes, I do, Uncle Bud. I play the piano with my feet. With your feet? What do you do with your hands? I hold them over my ears. I can't stand it. <laughs> oh, that's me. Sebastian, sit down on the piano stool. Sit down on the piano stool and play something for Uncle Bud. Okay, Louie. Ah! Yeah, yeah. What's the matter, Sebastian? Who unscrewed the top off this piano stool? <laughs> come, come. Come, Sebastian. Let's see you play something. Okay. Uh, uh, Sebastian, Sebastian. What was that you played? Home sweet home. Now, well, that was terrible. We have a terrible home. <laughs> Sebastian, I'm surprised at you. You can play better than that. I gave you 50 cents for a piano lesson yesterday. I know it, Louie, but I spent the money on my girlfriend. I bought her a peppermint stick. You've got a girlfriend at your age? Yep, and yesterday was the first time I kissed her. You kissed her? Yeah, and we better finish the program fast. I'm getting hoarser and hoarser. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kissed her yesterday, Uncle Lappet. 
but it was an accident. We were both eating the same peppermint stick, and I ate past my half. <laughs> Sebastian, here I was depending on you to play the piano for me tonight. I was going to make my debut as a singer, and you deliberately take the hard-earned money I gave you for piano lessons and spend it on a high living and wild women. You have impugned on my good name. Why do you always do these things to me, Sebastian? Oh, I'm a bad boy. Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Technical Sergeant Henry Schauer of Scobie, Montana. In duels with three German machine gun nests, his deadly marksmanship killed the entire gun crews. He stood there shooting unprotected with machine gun bullets tearing up the ground at his feet. The Medal of Honor was presented to him by Lieutenant General Alexander Patch. In your honor, Sergeant Schauer, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 400,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> The three camel radio shows honors the Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the camel caravans traveling from camp to camp have thanked audiences of more than four million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore, Monday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Well, Costello, if you really want more music on our show next week, I'll, I'll bring along my cousin Chuck Reisner. But Abbott, I didn't know your cousin Chuck Reisner was a singer. <laughs> Very few people knew that. But uh, cousin Chuck is a basso profundo. I wish you hadn't said that, Abbott. But what's wrong with me saying that Chuck is a basso profundo? Because some of those children turn out to be the best people. Oh, please don't talk about my cousin Chuck Risen like that. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. 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 next week for another great Abbott and Costello show. And remember, try camels on your throat and your taste. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. To many a pipe-smoking man, there is one symbol of Christmas almost as familiar as the holly wreath and the evergreen tree itself. I mean that big, cheery, pleasure-filled package of Prince Albert smoking tobacco with the bright Christmas band. Yes, many a Merry Christmas has been made merrier still by that pound or half-pound package of smoking joy. Rich, full, yet mild flavor, aged in the wood aroma, the famous crimp cut for firm packing, easy drawing, and even burning. And then, too, Prince Albert is so tongue-gentle thanks to its no-bite treatment. Look at that Christmas list of yours again. There's many a man's name on it, beside which you'll want to write Prince Albert. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>